Hello and welcome to my lecture on mobile radio propagation and fading. So this will be the first series out of three series on mobile radio propagation fading. So in the first series, I'm going to touch on the basic and classification of fading. So this topic is part of the topics under the subject mobile and personal radio communication which is one of the courses for the master coursework that is enrolled in University Kebangsaan Indonesia. And my name is Rosgadi Nordin and I'm the lecturer for this subject. So for the first series, I'm going to focus on three different aspects of uh, feeding uh, fundamentals. We're going to look at the basic of feeding, the propagation mechanism, and later on, we're going to look at two broad categories of feeding, which is large-scale feeding and small-scale feeding. And the references that I use for my lecture is coming from these two sources. So the first one is Rappaport. It's a very reliable book published in 1996. And then the second one is from Bernard Clark published in Atropy Communication in 1997. And interestingly, the paper from Bernard Sklar received close to 1,900 citations since 1997, while Rappaport is not a stranger in wireless areas, is very prominent in terms of uh, channel modeling. Okay, let's start. Uh, the communication system in terms of the reliability and the communication link is dictated by the channel environment. So if you have a very good channel environment, the chances to establish a very reliable link is very high. However, the channel environment, especially in the wireless area, is not very unpredictable and as such, it is very dynamic. Therefore, it often causes difficulty in terms of doing analysis and evaluation. So we're going to look at this unique characteristic in the communication channel, which is described as a fading. So what happens in a fading is the signal amplitude will be varied across different time and frequency. It depends on what kind of fading, fading that they are experiencing. So the fading occur due to different kind of uh, effect. So one of the effect is known as multipath propagation. And the simplest one is known as a path loss. And if the, the radio signal encounter an obstruction, it will experience a shadow, shadow fading. Well, if the signal is encounter a relative motion due to speed, you will encounter what we call as a fast fading. Now let's look at this uh, communication block diagram, which has been established by Shannon Weaver. So what Shannon Weaver have specified is the role of each of the block diagram. Start from the transmitter to the receiver. And in between the transmitter, we have this wireless channel. So the channel basically divided to two. The first one is known as guided, while the second one is unguided. So the guided channel normally refer to those physical channel that we can see, for example, like the LAN cable and the optical cable. Well, for the case of unguided, in this subject, we are interested to focus on the wireless channel. There are several more other classification, it can be like the satellite. We also have the infrared. And you have several others like the radio that use. Okay. So the, the focus on this lecture is specifically on this channel here and uh, in, the, in terms of the wireless uh, contacts. But what I want to further add in addition to the 
unpredictable channel. The receiver will also encounter what we call as a noise. However, the noise will be covered in other different subjects and in my lecture today, we're going to be very specific on the wireless channel. So this feeding is always described as an imperfection or something that is unwanted in, a, in the receive signal. Unfortunately, something that we cannot avoid. So uh, for, for this uh, lecture, we, we're going to look at the characteristic of feeding, but later on, we're going to discover some of the technique that the past engineers have introduced to overcome this imperfection in the channel. Okay, so that there are two kinds of feeding. So the first one is known as, as a large scale feeding. If you look at the graph, what it says here is that the power varies gradually. Or if you look at the trend, we can tell that the gradual decay can be modeled by using an exponential math equation. Okay. So the, the, the gradual change occur as the receiver move away from the transmitter. It can be due to large distance and, in, and also due to the terrain profile surrounding the area. Okay. So now let's look at the small scale fading. The small scale fading basically is further visualized by zooming the small signal at this particular point, okay? So if you look at the graph, it basically show a very rapid fluctuation. So this is the small scale feeding. The rapid fluctuation occurs due to these three different uh, propagation behaviors, which is reflection, diffraction, and scattering. So as a result, the receive signal can either experience a destructive or constructive interference, which is also known as multipath. Before we look at the fading classification, these are several propagation mechanisms that is very common in, in the wireless channel. So the, the first one is known as the line of sight propagation. So the line of sight spread propagation occur due to a due to free space without any obstruction between a transmitter and the receiver. Well, the second type of propagation known as refraction. So this refraction, it depends on the materials and also which is basically described by the conductors, conductivity and also the dielectric properties. For example, if we have two different medium here. So example like this one here have a very high dielectric properties. You will experience uh, the RF signal that pass through this material will experience a refraction. Okay. So you can view the refraction effects similar to, to, to the object that you see when you put a pencil in a glass of water. So it's, it's a basically the, the, the image of the pencil is slightly bent. So this is one of the reflection phenomenon in the wireless communication. The second, the third one is about diffraction. Diffraction basically due to presence of a very sharp irregular edges or object. For example, like this case is the mountain top. But in the case of urban environment, you can have uh, the rooftop normally can be source of a diffraction too, okay? So what happened, the wave will be bent around the obstacle and it further cause several diffraction of the RF signal. And this is the fourth type of uh, propagation mechanism known as reflection. The reflection will occur if the wavelength hit on a very large object. 
for example, uh, like the 2G wavelength, uh, if you're using that 800 to 900 megahertz spectrum, it's approximately between 30 to 40 centimeter. So for a 40 centimeter wavelength, when it hit a large building, obviously it will encounter a reflection, okay? And the final propagation mechanism known as scattering. And uh, I like to extend the past example of that 2G wavelength. So when that uh, wavelength uh, hit on a smaller object, for example, like the street sign, it will further cause the scattering of the RF signal. Okay. So in general, we have five different kind of propagation mechanism, which is the line of sight, refraction, diffraction, reflection, and scattering. Right now, we're going to spend a few minutes to, to understand this classification established by Bernard Skla in the paper. So what Bernard have established is we have two kind of fading which is the large-scale fading and the small-scale fading. Now, let's focus on the large-scale fading. It further classified into two types, which is the attenuation across distance, or in a simple word, I call as a pass loss. While the second one, variation about the mean, it basically states that the signal encounter a shadowing effect, so now let's pay attention on the small scale feeding. So it further divided into two, which is time spreading of the signal and time variance of the channel. So the time variance of the channel occur due to the relative motion or speed of either the transmitter or the receiver. While the time spreading of the signal, this is what I describe as a multipath effect. And uh, Bernard Clough further classify the, the multipath feeding and the time variance of the channel into two different domains, which is time delay domain, frequency domain. And also for the case of uh, time variance of the channel, did they still use time domain, but now we have another new domain known as Doppler shift. So in in a, in general now we have four different domain that we can use to further analyze the impact of small scale feeding, and also Skla established this concept of duality. So the idea of duality is. You can use the frequency domain and time domain, for example, like this two, frequency domain description and time domain description to further analyze between different uh, feeding behaviors. We're going to, to, to look at more details on this duality concept and that different four different domains in our third series of the lecture, which is on small scale feeding. In case you lost with the classification, I have this quite general classification on fading, which I hope is easy to follow. So the large scale fading, we know we have two kind of large scale fading. While the small scale fading, we, we, we categorize into two broad areas, but we further narrow it down into several fading phenomenon. For example, like multiple feeding is further classified as either two. The first one known as frequency selective feeding, it will cause the distortion of the received signal or a different name to this is known as intersymbol interference. While there, there's another effect due to multiple feeding is known as uh, flat feeding. So unlike the frequency selective, what happened in the flat fading, 
the channel doesn't encounter any variation. Well, now look at the, the time variance or what I call a Doppler spread. The Doppler spread further categorized into two different categories, which is fast feeding and slow feeding. So the, as the name implies, basically the signal either vary at the at a very fast pace or at a very slow pace. So it depends on the speed and also the, the relative motion between the transmitter and the receiver. I like to share this drawing that I prepared by using my Apple Pencil and Adobe Fresco. This drawing basically describes about the first category of path loss feeding, which is the path loss. So you have a transmitter here and a receiver. So as the receiver move away from the transmitter, in this case, the telco tower, you can see that the signal slowly decaying exponentially. So the path loss phenomenon, I like to use this analogy similar to the similar to the, our observation when we throw a stone into a lake, that's when we can see a ripples. So the decreasing ripple observed from the heating center is similar to the impact of the path loss. This is the second category of uh, uh, large scale feeding, uh, known as shadow feeding. So if you look at the phone, mobile phone here, it is it experience shadow due to this tall and large building from the source of the transmitter. So based on this reason, these mobile devices encounter a shadowing effect because the radio frequency signal unable to penetrate to this large building. Well, you can see here there's no problem with the RF signal because it experiences a straight anosite. Now, let's look at the small scale feeding. So again, I have another drawing which I prepared. Uh, this uh, drawing described about multipath. Multipath is very dominant if you are in an indoor area, for example, like the drawing I have here. Let's say you are currently stay at home connected to your Wi-Fi. This is the Wi-Fi access point. And then this is your laptop. So what happened in, in, in a room, you, you will experience this multipath. So like this example, I can say that we have three different multipath generated from the communication between the AP and the laptop. So the first one is due to the straight line of sight. The second one due to reflection on the shielding. While the third one due to reflection on the wall. Okay. So what happened at the receiver, it will receive three different multipath component, but it will arrive at different delays, at different strength, even at different phase change, okay? So this multipath is similar to the echo of our own voice if we heard when we are inside an empty room. Now, uh, this is the second class of small scale feeding. Uh, the time variance due to speed, or what I call as a Doppler spread. So the Doppler spread, if you look at this drawing here, you can tell that the car is moving at a very fast speed, okay? Not only at fast speed, it moves away from the transmitter across different distance. So what happened is, in the case of Doppler spread, it will encounter a frequency shift or the frequency change. Normally, we talk about the frequency carrier that have been shifted 
due to relative motion of the receiver depends if they are closer or far away from the transmitter. Okay, so that's uh, basically summarized my first part of the lecture on uh, propagation and feeding. I've uh, shown some several visual to describe large scale feeding, which basically divided into two path loss and shadowing. We also have small scale feeding, and we, we learned that the most dominant impact are uh, in terms of uh, the small scale feeding coming from the multipath feeding. Okay. Then we have this uh, time variance due to speed, uh, which can generate the fast fading and slow fading. So I think that's all. And then uh, we're going to conclude uh, our lecture and uh, see you guys in, hopefully to see you guys in the second series of the lecture, which I'm going to cover a lot on the last skill feeding. So that's all for now and thank you for